If you think about history, an ordinary history that we read about in history books that you learn about in school, it's really nothing more than a history of crime and violence. Ospensky said overcoming violence was our final aim. All negative emotions which engender so many evil consequences spring from man as violence. All negative emotions, all of them, that bring about all the evil consequences on the planet spring from man as violence. Violence is the flower bed in which negative emotions grow. If you'll think about violence, it's really interesting. We are so immersed in it that we don't know what it is as a rule. In the Sufi school, there was a so-called mystical poet named Saadi. And he was very religious as a child. Well, one day the Koran was being read to a class. He said to his father, many boys went to sleep while the Koran was being read. And he thought that was very bad. His father said, so all you have got from this reading of the Koran is nothing but finding fault with others. I assure you, my son, it would have been better had you been asleep like those boys you criticized. When was the last time you said that to your kid when your kid came and criticized one of his siblings or somebody else? And the answer to that is, well, I've never done that. And the reason is because we are steeped in violence. But you see, the father saw the violence of this right away. He saw that his son, Sadi, was doing violence to his classmates. How was he doing that? Is intolerance the beginning of violence? If you think you're better than others, superior to others in the wrong way. Can this bring about violence? How can you feel that you're superior to others in the right way? Violence always comes from thinking one can do. I love to watch your minds on your faces. It's just really incredible. This is not hard stuff. All these things really do connect. You can connect these dots. It's not difficult. We have the dot up here. We have violence. We have superiority. Okay, so we know that they're connected. So let's add thinking you can do. How are you going to feel superior unless you think you can do? And you see how this all connects? It's not difficult. We have thinking we can do. Can do. Superior. How do you spell superior? That's how I spell it too. Violence I can spell. Violence I can do. I can do violence because I'm superior. And you thought it was mashed potatoes, right, Joel? That was the cause of violence. Violence always breeds violence. And yet... We live under this illusion that violence cures violence. When actually the truth is that violence only breeds violence. The only thing ever comes from violence is more violence. We don't believe that. We justify our violence instead. We like to justify our superiority because we think we can do. We justify violence so that we can be superior because we think we can do. You notice anything about that? It's a triad. There's no manifestation without a triad. There's a triad in everything. It's the law of three. Everything you do from violence passes into the world both as a triad and an octave and can only produce a reaction to violence. So everything you do as violence passes into the world as a triad, but then it also begins an octave. It's an octave of violence. And that little octave of violence will have little sub-octaves. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is exemplified everywhere in life. You look around, you'll see violent machines creating new violent machines. It's violent machines, us, creating violent machines, our children, new violent machines. And they're better at it. Look at them with their video games. What are you playing today? I'm killing this. I'm killing that. Well, what's your favorite game? Destroying this. Killing that. They have that rated M. Why? There's not even any blood in it. Jesus said, resist not him that is evil. The truth is, it's impossible to understand this on a scale anywhere outside of ourselves. The only way to understand what he said is to understand it on a scale in ourselves. Can we observe violence out there? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Don't resist him that is evil. Why is it that that's something that we can only make sense of, understand on a scale in ourselves and not outside? Why is it it doesn't make sense out there? If you don't resist evil out there, what will happen? If we don't have a military, what will happen? It doesn't work in the world. It only works in ourselves. It's like bread. You have to eat it. You can't feed the world. You have to feed yourself. You can't cure world hunger. You've got to cure your own hunger. And that's really what Jesus was about. And that's what people missed. They missed the whole boat. They made it this big social hippie thing, this Greenpeace thing that Jesus started. And it wasn't that. It was all about the individual finding the kingdom of heaven within himself. But instead, they didn't want to do that work. They didn't want to do the inner work, the real hard inner work, the effort, the something that's possible for man. Instead, they turned it all outside. Well, let's clean up the world. 
Let's make all those people stop killing the whales. Let's make all those people stop using pesticides. Let's make all those people wear cotton clothes. Let's make all those people do this. Which, of course, is the irony of the whole thing with Jesus, is that his message, don't think that I've come to bring peace, because I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword. And there it is. It has divided people. It hasn't unified people like they think it's supposed to do. It's divided people. And he told them that's what would happen, but they didn't get it. We didn't get it. Violence always arises from a feeling of superiority, that we're better than others. Sadi thought himself better than others, congratulating himself on his virtue. They fell asleep. That's very bad. And what is the unspoken thing? I didn't fall asleep. I'm very good. I noticed that they fell asleep. I'm very good. I didn't fall asleep like them. That's very bad. So he thinks he's superior to the others, and he's congratulating himself on his virtue. You'll always be violent if you take for granted that you're better it follows then that if you are being violent in whatever way, then you must think you're better. Consciously, you may see where you're better without feeling the violence of intolerance. We need to get this balanced out. The violence of intolerance. All violence is the violence of intolerance because it comes from a feeling of superiority, which comes from the belief that I can do something. You've got to be asleep because you can't do. Well, when you realize you can't do, your superiority is deflated. So that's the end of that. What superiority is there if you can't do? So if you remove this, this silly illusion, this belief that you can do, the superiority collapses, the violence has to disappear because the triad's now gone. There's nothing to support it. You can see that you're more conscious. You can see that you're awake, more awake at this moment. I'm more conscious now. So I'm less violent now. I'm better off than I was. I'm better off than that person who is more asleep. Yes, but it's not because I can do. You see, right? Right. Because the superiority is gone. And the instant you think it's because you can do, you're asleep again. You're in the same position as him now, except that you're dreaming that you're better than him, which is all it is. Because we're all in the same boat. Remember the, the thing I used to say about, imagine a group of people at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. You're standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon looking down. Which one's tallest? You know, you could have a, like a little kid who's like this tall and a giant towers over him by 12 feet. But from the top of the Grand Canyon, you can't tell at all. All there is little dots. And that's the whole superiority thing. You have to be down here at the bottom of the Grand Canyon sleeping in order to see that one thing is superior to another thing. Okay, Diana, you ready? Where's your Bible? All right, whip it out there to Genesis chapter 11. All thinking that one can do leads to violence. All thinking that one can do leads to violence. Read chapter 11 for us, Diana. Now the whole earth used the same language and the same word. And it came about as they turned the east that they found the plain in the land of Shinar and set it there. And they said to one another, Let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they used brick for stone and they used tar for mortar. Okay, stop. They all speak one language. What does this mean? There was a time when man was under the rule of esoteric teaching. There was a time when man spoke the same language. They could understand each other because they were all under esoteric teaching. So there was a time that that happened. The whole earth was one language under one esoteric teaching. So what happened after that? So they journeyed east and they found a valley, they found a plain, they found a lower level. So they dwelt there. They found a lower level of understanding and they stayed there. Brick for stone, slime for mortar or whatever. You know what stone represents in the Bible. It's a level of the truth, a basic level of the truth, hard, rigid, but it's a level of the truth, but it's still the truth. And we won't deal with the slime or the tar or whatever for mortar, because you know what that means anyhow. So they tried building a tower to reach to heaven. What does that mean? They passed into self-worship. Because they could all speak the same language, because they were all under the same teaching, they began to believe that they could do, which is exactly what Jennifer said, and they could do. Well, what does it matter whether they could actually do or whether they believed they could do? What does it matter? The fact is that they passed into self-worship. They began to worship their own understanding, their own knowledge. And isn't that exactly what we do? So they thought they could do. Could they really do? Can man really do? At our level, can man really do? Can he really do? No. Right, exactly. Where we are, no, you can't. You may be able to move a little bit, but you can't really do. That is reserved for higher states that we don't know about. So they believe they could do. Science has given man the idea that he can do. And here we are. Our culture is a result of science feeding man 
an incessant diet of you can do it, you can do it, we can do it, we can go to the moon, we can go to Mars, we can do anything we want to do. We can build this, we can build that, we can do anything. So this place where we are now, this place is an oasis in the world. If you would appreciate it or not depends on your understanding of the work. You understand the work, you'll appreciate this place. You don't understand the work, you're not going to appreciate it. You walk away from it. It's no big deal. It doesn't have anything that science says that you can have. Here, we think differently. We speak about different things. We keep alive something that doesn't depend on the pendulum of violence. What for? We do it because somebody's got to do it. What else is there? You keep the steps cleared, whether people are walking on them or not. You keep the path repaired, whether there are people traveling on it or not. That's not your job. Your job is to keep the path cleared. Your job is to walk the path. And if you're going to walk it, then keep it clean. And if somebody comes afterwards, great. And if somebody doesn't, so what? You're doing your job. Will someone come? Absolutely. Somebody will stumble on this path. One way or another, somebody stumbles on the path. That's the way it works. And so the question is, what are you going to be doing?